Good day, master students. Let's go ahead and continue on the analysis here for the short form videos for educational uh, content. So what I'm going to do here is further the analysis here that we originally started by identifying a biformation breakout using psychological targets and psychological formation, right? Uh, uh, you know, the first of uh, just a recap here, right? So the first formation was the ascending channel, bearish formation. Second formation, which tends to be a typical uh, formation used for uh, breakdowns, it could be uh, head and shoulders, right? And now the opposing side or the inverse of that would be descending formation with an inverse head and shoulders. That also tends to happen too. Now we're we're diving into the very basics here. Of course, we wanna we wanna uh, just get our feet wet first. So what we're gonna do here to further the the uh, I I guess we can say to further the ability to see a future price or a forecast of one is by using the Fibonacci sequence or the Fibonacci ratio, right? So we're going to use a tool called the Fibonacci retracement from TradingView. So please go ahead and uh, click. I'm going to use an arrow here so that you can see exactly where I'm trying to say. So I want you to click right on that menu there that has the uh, that has this right here, right? So click on that on the right hand arrow next to it. And you'll see right there that there's a Fibonacci retracement. So I have it marked off on my favorites here with the with the star so that I can show up right down here in my favorites toolbar, which you can hide or display simply by clicking on that bottom left, uh, simply by clicking on that bottom left uh, uh, star right down there, all the way to the bottom of the screen right here. Okay, so I want you to click on that. And what I'm going to do here is release to you the uh, the parameters of my fib, right? So let's just go ahead and put it like this, right? And I'm going to double click on it. You can either double click here to pull that up, or you can go right into the, uh, right, uh, you know what, or, or right into this little pop up window that pops up whenever you uh, expand uh, Fibonacci retracement or any tool really. So you can click on the gear icon. And uh, these are my settings here. So go ahead and take a screenshot of it. You can use mine, you can use whichever one you like. It really is, it really does lay in discretion. And uh, your back test too. Right, so whatever whatever uh, you see fit. Okay, now that you got it, let's go ahead and uh, and uh, start talking about the Fibonacci sequence. So the Fibonacci sequence is a, is a set of numbers um, that are are typically used in uh, natural sciences, in artwork, uh, structures. Uh, it's it's literally the building blocks of life. So uh, you can actually YouTube. Uh, you know, the meaning, the meaning of, of uh, the 618, right? The 618 Fibonacci sequence. So search, search that, and then you'll see how important it is, uh, the, the, the sequence itself, right? So the, ratio, the ratios here, we use it in the trade to determine where, psychologically speaking, and geometrically speaking, we could uh, land. Typically, I find the best use of the not 382 0.382 Fibonacci ratio, the 272 Fibonacci ratio, and the 618. That is not to say that the other Fibonacci ratios are not used. It's just to tell you that those are the most popular ones that I tend to see humans react to. And this is something that this is something that humans react to naturally without knowing that we're actually going there. It's again, YouTube that thing so you can see uh <laughs> So you can see just how the meaning of that is, is incredible. You'll you'll be surprised to see uh, things dating back all the way to the uh, uh, to to the Roman Empire, man. It, it, it's just structures are built all around the uh, Fibonacci sequence. Okay, so yeah, let's go ahead and uh, and and apply this. So I am going to warn you here that the way I use a Fibonacci retracement tool is unlike the way that many people use theirs. Okay, so I have my own style on it. I'm not going to teach you the traditional ways. I am going to teach you the way I found the uh, the way that I found the most success used with it. Okay, so what I consider to be inverse, meaning a target like this to the downside, where it stretches to the downside, is actually not inverse in a, tra in a traditional form. That would be the correct way, right? So you would, uh, in fact, that in fact some people would actually uh, extend their you know their, their fibonacci retracement to something like this here to determine where and what targets are mostly used right so in my case i don't like to use it that way so i'm going to go ahead and show you 
my personal way. I consider this to be an inverse. Now, if we're looking at range, uh, at range targets, right? So I want to, uh, I want to identify a key moment in, in, let's just say, for example, this is, uh, you're, we're laddering down, right? We're laddering down. We have this, uh, massive, uh, shooting star candle here that then came down. We touched the bottom here and then we retraced immediately and then fell. So this right here really feels like to me, remember, this is full discretion. Okay. Team, there's no right or wrong answer. It's up to you to determine and back test it and see how it works out for you. So this to me feels like a key moment. So I'm going to take an inverse fib from that bottom side of the wick, right? From that bottom wick all the way to the range top of that wick. And then we're going to see what fibs are the ones being used. So I already see that the three spot 272 is landing perfectly with a take profit down here. Now, if we go ahead and hover over this uh, candle here, you can actually see in the OHLC values, the open high, low close, that the low is set to 50. Check it out. Low 50. And three spot 272, 50. And what were the favorites that I just told you that I tend to see the most action happen on? Well, that's right. The 272, the 382, and the 618. So now if we uh, retrace, if we retrace the candles here, you can see that the space between this top side and this top side landed between the 272 and the 618. Right? right in here, these two top candles. So that's already showing you that there's more, that there's more to rhyme here, right? And again, we're coming back down here to the low of this wick here, right? Let's go ahead and apply it there. Let's just go ahead and zoom in, sorry, so you can see that. This wick down here, you can see that we're coming in right at the split between the 272 and the 2618, right? So yet again, we're using those 272 and the 2618 targets perfectly. Now, what I will say is that your, your golden pocket is located here, okay? This is something that you should know. Always know this. You're not 3A2, 0 0.3A2, and 0 0.618. So the golden pocket is located always between the not 3A2 and the not 618, right? So that's how you can tell that there could be a pretty exponential move to the upside or downside when price action reaches that. And here's that moment that we took, right? So price action came two candles. This candle here, let's zoom in. This green candle here and this red candle here came into that golden pocket. And in inverse manner for me, that's a golden pocket to tell you that there's going to be a spring, right? So that spring actually led to the downside. And that's usually how I end up determining that there could be a very strong move. Sometimes entering the not 618 bouncing off of that not 0.5 or not 382 can lead to a pretty strong number. And it just so happened that it did. Right? So nice. That's not the only way to measure your Fibonacci sequence. Okay? Because there are, there are uh, uh, forward looks here. So let's just, let's just uh, say this. If we did draw it from this point and uh, we just continued, pardon me, and we just continued from this point here, then the people trading this Fibonacci sequence from this point here down to down here, meaning this retracement uh, value here, that means that they're probably still looking for further targets to the downside if it is that the uh, formation or that momentum, whether it be an RSI or stochastic momentum or moving averages, whatever that may be, if there is still support for the downside, then these people here trading these targets have not finished just yet or they took partial uh, partial exit and are actually waiting for a continuation to the downside to look at or observe further downside targets, okay? So that's one way to look at it. Now, the next way to look at it would be from taking, uh, let's say, for example, the current range low or the swing low to the swing high, right? So this is right here, this area here. We can go ahead and take into consideration that for future price pro uh, projections. So let's do another inverse fib just like this to determine where we can go. So we can already see that there's some rhyming happening here. 49.82 to 49.73 marks off very close to each other within the 3618 and the one spot 272. Now, now also here. 
4949 marks off the 4236, the four spot 236, and the one spot 618 at 4939. And uh, look down here, 4929 is your four spot 618. So everything lands geometric to it's it's uh, rhyming to each other, right? So this is another way for us to determine where other future targets can go to or we can land, right? So th these these types of things are important to look at because there are other traders who are also trading this. Okay, so that's one way to determine where where the downside is going to be. Now, what if you're saying to yourself, but what if this is not going to the downside? What if it's going to the upside? Fair enough. We take it the opposing way, right? So let's grab the Fib tool again, and let's take that swing high to the swing low in this in this case instead of the swing low to the swing high. So there you go. Now we start observing the targets to the upside. Now if we come up to the to the original area where we took our swing high, you can see there that it's at fifty one seventy five up here, and it just so happens that fifty one sixty two the one spot six one eight is located there. So it already is telling us that it's rhyming with this top side candle, the one spot six one eight golden mean, right? So that's a, that's that's a way for you to determine. Now, if you come to the uh, breakdown here, so let's just say that these two candles here were the last ones before the channel here before we broke down. Well, these two candles are rhyming very nicely with the one spot two seven two at fifty one twenty seven. Curious again, right? And now. If we're going to make a bounce to the upside, we would have to combine this analysis here with something else, with momentum or with moving averages. Say, for example, there was a very strong moving average down here. This is your, let's just say that it were your, uh, your SMA 200 right down here, right? This green line. And we were about to bounce to the upside. We can combine this with a shorter time frame, FIB retracement to 50.35. Right, because it could be possible for us to wick down a little bit here and then move to the upside based on a golden mean bounce and an SMA 200 combination, or since we just took the swing, uh, the the swing high to the swing low here for for the Fibonacci's to the upside, remember where your golden pocket is. Okay, so let's just go ahead and draw it in and take a look there. Look at where price action is currently sitting right now. And look at where the golden pocket is. So you're at the knot 382 to the knot 618, and your price action is sitting right under the knot 0.5. Okay, so meaning that sure, there could be another downside here or something, and it looks like the two spot 618 is very, very close to the knot 382, 5039 to 5035. So you can see how much rhyming there is. There's no one way to draw your Fibonacci retracement. There is not. It really matters how you perceive. It really matters how you backtest and how you see it useful to you. Similarly, similarly to uh, volatility here, not one person is going to be able to observe volatility like another person, right? You have your critical expansion, you have your critical contraction down here, but everything in the middle and everything... Uh, every metric that you would take based on a breakout or based on when you touch the inside of this, that's going to be personal to you, right? So I would encourage you to try and backtest and try your best into applying the Fibonacci retracement in any which way you can, right? For just one more example here, let's use this for example to determine where an upside could be. So let's take the swing high to that, to the swing low, and see what we have. Actually, you know, let me do it closer to here because price action already continued for a good while, right? So let's go ahead and take this fib just like this to this here and see what it did. Well, what do you know? Check it out. The first top side that we had here just so happens to be between the two spot 618 and the two spot 272. Look at that. 4960. Yeah, 4967 and 4950, right? Now, your next, the next resistance zone you have here was right up here. It looks like the candle went up to, went up to a high of 50.28. It looks like you have around 50 bucks or 49.98 at a three spot seven two, uh, three spot two seven two, sorry. And then, uh, 5014 at the three spot six one eight. So I guess that's just going to be the closest one there. The three spot six one eight at 5014 and you had 50.28 here or 50.20. Sorry. So six cents off of that six one eight mean. 
And, uh, and yeah, eventually, it looks like price action continued onto the upside, barely surpassed the four spot 618, and then came back down. And then look at where price action, look, look at the bounce here. It bounced from the two spot 618. The low of this candle here is 49.63. We had 49.67. And then guess what? We did it again right down here. This is 49.64 and this is 49.67. So you can see just how much we did. So now we bounced from this area at the two spot 618 golden mean. We bounced to the upside here, resisted from the four spot 236. And then guess where we landed? Right at the three spot 618. The low of this candle here is a low of 5016 and 5014 is your three spot 618. I want you to try your best to apply your Fibonacci retracement in anywhere you can. Okay. This tool is definitely going to be something that uh, you, you, you may uh, find useful. Okay, team. Very much appreciate everybody for coming on by. If any questions, you know where to reach me. And uh, I think this is a pretty good place to leave off. Good day, team.